Good morning. Let's give it until five after and for folks to arrive. Hello, oh, hope everyone as well. Hi, Tom. Um, Taylor, are you saying something? Because I um, cannot hear you. So I don't know if you can hear uh, Taylor. I, I did start. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can, we can hear you. All right. Yeah, I just said good morning to you. It'd be good afternoon for Tom. But... And we will get we can get started five after I guess Tom if if you're you're with that um, yeah yeah we'll thanks breath. Right, let's make a start. Um, afternoon, good morning. Maybe wait a couple more minutes, see if anyone joins. Still just the four of us at the moment. Um, right, well, let's make a start. So um, I noticed last week, Victor, you said you were attending a KCD in Columbia. Um, sounded like that was quite good. Uh, 
I can talk about uh, that that event. So, um, I mean, it, it was it was weekly. It was the first one which was made in Latin in, in person. So, uh, usually, open source communities in in Latin are not mature enough to so Europe. Um, the the good thing about it is um, Chris attended that conference. Um, most of the audience was the students, so um, and there were like a few um, companies uh, sharing uh, experiences and and other things. Not too much related with the, with Kubernetes and. and but I guess it was a, a good beginning. So, so we're planning to do a, a KCD maybe in Mexico or like uh, Guatemala. But yeah, I mean, this is a, a huge journey for, especially for Latin, uh, which is a bit behind compared with other, other countries around the world. So yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> um, that's pretty much about the feedback about that, that particular event. So not too much right with the, the telcos, not too much. Um, uh, well, there they were a few, few sessions about uh, Kubernetes, but they were just touching the, the basics um, about mostly how to deploy Kubernetes and how to use containers. Like, uh, as, as I mentioned before, like LATAM is not, at least in, in that particular is not not far. So Ooh. let's see. Okay. Yeah. And Taylor, you said you spoke with quite a few LATAM CSPs and vendors at the big 5G event. There was a lot more there than I expected, um, including some good presentations and also panels where you had um, <clears throat> folks from different uh, Latin America and uh, other parts of Canada. There was a good showing from Canada as well. But, um, I'm gonna try to get, reach out and talk with some of the folks that I've spoken with and see if we can get someone um, to come and talk with us here. That'd be great. Okay, um, so moving on to the agenda. Um, so the KubeCon North America CFP closes this Sunday. I don't know whether we've got any anyone who comes to this meeting is doing a telco specific talk or proposal for that. So there is the one thing to keep in mind for us, anyone we're speaking with, um, there there's going to be a new track at this starting at this KubeCon for <laughs> What's that? A, a new track for network and edge. So potentially just the main KubeCon, we could end up having a lot more related to what we're talking about, in addition to what we would do at Cloud Native Telco Day or anything like that. Um, so I'd say we should encourage folks to submit for this one. It'd be nice to have that track filled up. Yeah, that would be good. Um, do we, I mean, obviously not today, but generally, do we have many um, North American telcos or vendors involved in the working group? Um, I, mean, I don't know about other European ones, but I'm I'm struggling with travel um, still. 
I'm unlikely to be able to get there. But... Yeah. So Taylor, do you know if uh, that new um, track is going to be at the same time as the telco layer, or like, I mean, it's not going to overlap? I it goes. This is some primary main KubeCon, so this isn't a co-located event. This would be um, uh -huh. concurrent. Uh, so there's the concurrent talks that happen during KubeCon. And there are a lot when they're selecting talks and um, for KubeCon, they do it based on filling in different topics. So that track, so different areas. So they've added this whole set, uh, topic area for sets of talks to fill in. And that's the networking edge that'll run beside other things like I, i'm not sure what they are but maybe there will be like an environmental sustainability track and then you would have potentially if if that was the track you could have a networking edge talk at the same time as a environmental those will be happening during the main kubecon so this isn't oh, okay. this isn't the co-located event we d we still need sponsorship and and push for the sponsorship and get uh, things going for a Helco day, and I th I think we should fill that up separately from anything that happens. Of course, if you know if if someone <clears throat> submits a CFP for you know a some type of networking or telecom focused talk at main KubeCon, and they also do something at Cloud Native Telco Day um, or their company or whatever, then it's probably more likely that company is gonna pay for that group to, to go. So I think that's fine. Got it, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Notice the KCD Texas was just added as a thing. Is that a newly scheduled event? Oh, I didn't even see that one. Closes in August and October. Yeah, I just saw it in the drop down. I was looking for the KCD. Mexico or Guatemala, and I noticed there's a Texas one. DSPs just opened uh, last week, and they are they remain open until August 30th. That's a better time of year for something here. <clears throat> Bit cooler. Yeah. In, in which part of Texas is it going to be? have no idea. Uh, I think it's near say. Dallas, Irving, Texas. Near oh, Dallas. Irving. Yeah, all right. Okay. That'll allow easier uh, flights, more flights going into the Dallas Fort Worth DFW Metroplex. All right. Victor, are you going to go to Open Compute San Jose in October? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I haven't considered, but yeah. It's, as long as the restriction is free, I can catch it. Um. I meant to say, actually, one of my colleagues spoke at a cloud native meetup in London. 
we'll find a link for it. Um, trying to navigate meetup.com is always a challenge. in the chat if anyone's interested. I don't know if the presentation is available. Just thought I'd share anyway. Um, okay, any other updates on the other events in terms of things we should be pushing people to propose, present it? Sponsorship for Cloud Native Software Day. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, if if we don't get sponsorship, and I, I keep hearing some people kind of say they're interested and in it's not moving forward, it's possible that it doesn't get supported and added. And that seems not good since it does seem like we have a good number of people. That it's frustrating that we don't have virtual because we've had, on the first one, there was a larger showing with people there and people remote. Yeah, so we need sponsorship for that. Um, so sponsorship's required for virtual, is it? Yeah, and a sponsorship at the level where we could get virtual. <clears throat> a bunch of small ones would be as you know can work up. But we need that, and then if if it weren't to happen, or even if it does happen, do we want to do something like the Telco community gathering that we did in Amsterdam, where we had an additional time. So the reason why we did that was Cloud Native Telco Day was only half a day, and it seemed like there was enough interest to keep talking beyond yeah. time. And that was a very successful um, event, or whatever you call that, and the community gathering. Yeah, it was good. An unconference. Yeah, an unconference. So do we want to have another one of those? I'm saying we like we called it the working group putting forward something. Do we want to do that? <clears throat> Plan for it? Yeah, I mean I, I think we should. It was I I thought the one in um Amsterdam was brilliant. It was it was good having some input from other people, um, and just hearing people's views about the things that are being discussed. A bit more of a relaxed atmosphere. Right. Um, it does. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, no, the other thing that I was thinking is about the audience. I guess like a it was more um, even that was a little bit more informal. I guess that the people more free to share ideas like uh for example when they were sharing about SIBA project they were like we, we didn't have any SIBA project during the circle day but in the gathering we have a at least a good explanation about the, the project and goals and things like that so yeah plus one with a gathering event 
so it's it seems to me that if if there's a good chunk of I, I don't know how how much uh, publicity's happened for the KubeCon networking edge track, but if if we have more folks that are coming in and and putting their presentations in under that track, and maybe they're more networking telecom related uh, as a result, then it's likely we'll have more people that might be interested in the community gathering. Um, that would be one thing I'd want to take advantage of if we put it forward. It sounds like Tom, you you probably wouldn't be coming to the um, to that if you know if, if it's happening at KubeCon North America. No, in North America, no. Yeah. Um, so that maybe you could help help us with organizing and stuff. Um, yeah, happy to do that. And then. If we're gonna do it, we want to try to. It's it's frustrating that the CFP is coming up this soon for the KubeCon because it feels like we need to push to say, get your you know your telecom CFP in so you're there and get a large group of folks ready to talk with us. But um, maybe all this week we should do that post we can post on various places and reach out to colleagues yeah um anyone that can get <clears throat> a cfp in for kubecon is more likely to get uh, support from their organization for going to the conference uh, having people just show up for the community gathering is very unlikely yeah great specifically in that location i think if it was like san jose or somewhere in the bay area we may <clears throat> be able to pull people in even if they weren't speaking um yeah, but sure. let's try to do that this week get it you know put put some stuff out say we'd like to see it um kubecon maybe we need to even put a a google form together yeah like we did for Amsterdam. as simple as are you interested yeah, yeah. But also yeah. to the CFP. The for the for the main. Yeah, the idea. main the main one. Yep. 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 Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is a PR to review, Regarding that PR, I, well, one thing that I noticed is he hasn't uh, signed his uh, commit, so maybe something that we have to tell him. 
And given that it is a, it's his first contribution in, in the, into this project, we have to manually approve uh, execution of um, the, the, the CI. So and just uh, just approve it. So right now he's uh, running the, the CI. The, the last thing that I check, uh, he uh, didn't uh, update some references. So, so hopefully okay. this time. Yeah. yeah, it looks like there's some spell check problems as well. Yeah, but probably that's something that we haven't fixed in the, the main branch. So my, my major concern was like with the, 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 the broken, um, References. Yeah. Okay, probably the only feedback I'm going to put it in the the, the, the PR. Um, yeah, is regarding the the DCO uh, failure. Um, it's like, uh, I don't know if he has submitted, yeah, he has three commit messages, but only one was signed. Right, okay. Well, we can ask him to update that. The, the other thing that we can do is maybe we can squash them. Um, I mean, modify all these things during the merge, like, uh, so in that way we, we can accelerate the things and. Yeah, because then is DCO will be on the squash commit. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And let's see if it succeeds this check. Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to um, fail uh, because there are a few, uh, few things in from the gathering event uh, markdown page, uh, which is not following like standard markdown. So, but yeah, again, it's, those things are from from the main main branch, not really with that particular PR. So is that, sorry, I didn't quite follow what you're saying. Is that something we need to ask him to update in his PR? Is there something to update or do we squash and merge and then do it ourselves? I think that we can squash merge. Mm. It's just like a simple change of uh, file from one location to another one. And eventually we can fix the other things like uh, the linting issues and plus the start checker. I think that we can do that in subsequent uh, PRs. Okay. Aiuto.
And do we want him to fix these markdown formatting things before it merges or no? I'm sure no. Well, I, I... Go ahead, Taylor. That was Tom. No. No, what I was saying is like, yeah, those like, uh, yeah, we need to fix it later. Like, I mean, it's not related with, especially with the PR, like, uh, so I guess yeah. it's fine. Formatting things. Yep, I would agree. Um, how many reviews does it need? Number. Add content and create PR for strong. So is there, a, is there a PR created for this or are we saying we need a PR? Uh, there's no PR yet. There's a okay. the draft um, document. Is there any other new comments? Just checking. No, there aren't. All right. Well. Okay. Yeah. I suggest we get that created as a PR then. Um, mm -hmm. See what. So, trying to write up. Uh, add more content into here. Okay. Um, that summary, that first <laughs> one that you're looking at, um, I it's just a copy from there. The next part is content that was related to test suite, test suite, and other places. Um, just an example. But that first portion um, from Docker, it kind of just communicates what we're doing. I, so it's hard. I don't know. I got, we can write something else. Of course, you know, it talks about Docker and stuff. But some this intent, I think, is what this practice is going for one yeah. process category or type whatever it's going to be called um yep yeah, agree yeah. i mean there's no point in trying to wordsmith something new if right if if docker's wording is is fine other than the word docker then right yeah i mean i i think we can you know probably reference this just add it in the reference section but um, write something very similar this yeah. bottom part is maybe a little bit redundant it kind of explains it's kind of expanding on it but between these two we could write something up um, yeah maybe talking about a cnf running on kubernetes or something like that but take those ideas and and put it like that uh, Anyways, I, I think um, the worst 
thing with this whole best practice is the words process type or process category is only slightly better. Hmm. It's probably the worst part where people get stuck on that um, versus focusing on the concern. Yeah. The the thing is we're we're trying to help people with like guide it towards implementation a little bit more than being super high level and say write good code <laughs> you know um <laughs> that's not going to work and I, I worry a little bit that if we change this to one concern per container which would be the highest level then someone would go oh our concern is this whole network function which happens to require i'm not going to say processes i'm going to use another word uh, multiple applications to handle the concern of that network function service which happens to be nginx apache you know whatever else yeah dns server and a ton of other things and they go our concern is this service and it requires these applications to all run which are all different processes whatever but the that would kill the point of this you know then we go well your concern is too large so i don't and then we have to get into i'm trying to figure this out like the the intention of saying one process category or one process type is it's more likely that when you get into a single process like the HTTP server or Nginx or DNS or um, I can't use like a the session manager even though that 5G core it's it's it is breaking it down but the session manager actually has multiple components when you look at like open 5 5gs or free 5gs either one of those projects so there's something there it's easier to look at other applications like nginx or something like that core dns where they were designed to handle one concern truly one concern like what are they actually doing core dns may have a http way of talking with it because i know they have a lot of different uh, ways of doing integration but they're not trying to be a generic http service uh, providing uh, you know whatever you want to say on that but that gray area where things start blending is where we get a lot of arguments and then we get a lot of blocking on something and not moving forward so anyways, this is my point. I don't know how to name this, but I think we can work on the content for this best practice and not worry as much about the naming. And then we can come back whenever we have all the content fleshed out. So this, the summary, I think we can probably get something we like. Motivation, I'd like to, we need to, replace what's here this was uh this this is something that we had before so um so do you, do you want to do the kind of the working changes in this google docs or in the pr yeah let's let's go ahead and do it in the google doc okay now we can just start making changes um they can be like this or people mark stuff out or do suggestions or just write stuff in i don't think it really matters since we have history and of course we can have comments this is linked out of you know the main document i don't think i put a, a link to it in the in the ticket um we'd probably i don't know if it's let me see what the sharing is can you edit or suggest edits no um it looks like it's anyone with link can comment. So theoretically, we could so I can suggest put it into the ticket. And 
worst case is we get spam suggest edits. That's really the only bad thing when you drop something like this. But as long as we don't make it edit directly, I'm going to yeah. give you edit access. Tom, um, your Gmail account? Uh, you want, Vodafone. Do you do that or your Vodafone? My Vodafone account, please. All right. I got another, I'm going to grab another summary item. I was trying to find content to put in the motivation. I haven't found that yet. Um, let's see. It's best practice. Da, 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 da. Um, summary. Kind of like this one. This is, uh, scroll up into the summary section. What do y'all think of that one? And we can, you know, or maybe it could be like a CNS microservice or something. Yeah. Yeah, again, I think that the general gist is, is clear, isn't it? It's just making sure that the the kind of definition of those terms is kind of clear and understood. So there was a comment, I think, in the ticket about not spawning external process processes. I think Ian put it in about what about spawning like the IP command or other, I'll say, simple commands as part of to facilitate the functionality of the main process, I'll say concern. And <clears throat> in that, it seems like it's, this is, I'm just gonna put it in, in the ticket. Actors. Here we go. See my comment over there? Yep. Yeah. So um, that seems okay. You know, these words in this are saying don't do it. And again, this is like, what is your intent? So if we talk about what is, you know, what we're trying to guide people on a best practice, and then what is the intent of that best practice? And what is the intentions when someone spawns the executable? So if the concern was something like a it's it's a IPsec microservice uh, like a a um, it's the endpoint where it's you're connecting ipsec clients are connecting and this is a terminating ipsec endpoint 
and you're trying to, you need to know what are the different addresses or whatever that maybe maybe this pod has lots of different um, network service connections or something. I'm trying to come up with this <laughs> story. So you have lots of different connections, however that is. Multis, maybe it's the new fancy network object that has a pull request. So it's, it's actually native to Kubernetes, but you have a lot of uh, endpoints and you have an inbound connection to the, your service. You know, maybe that comes in through the normal flat network. Doesn't really matter. You receive this connection. Yeah. And that you need to look at and they're saying, hey, I'm trying to connect to, you know, some some other place and they're talking to you right trying to connect in somewhere maybe you spawn the ip command and look at all of the available networks or something as part of it um of course you could do this in some other fashion there's there's uh kernel calls there's all sorts of stuff but one way to implement it would be you're calling the ip command um, i'm using this ip command because i think ian uh, pointed that one out but yeah you know, that one to me would be part of the concern and it's not something where you're stepping outside it's you're using the ip command as if it was an internal function or whatever if you wrote it um that to me sounds okay but if you said i'm going to spawn up a Postgres database, and then I have a web server running that's connected to the Postgres database, and that web server runs, you know, something to collect IP info and have that available to the IPsec service that then goes and talks to this network IP database. It seems like that IP database should be moved over to some other pod and you reach out and talk to it even if you yeah. said i'm going to feed it from my own pod so here's all the connections i have but something like that does that resonate yeah. with you? It, it does make sense yeah all right so i agree with expanding to be okay with uh, running executables that are within the concern and i understand why it's written this way because i can see People just saying, well, I'm everything that I run is the concern and it becomes too expansive. So something with, we need to capture the intent. Um, but I think between these three, that's a good start. Uh, do y'all have any thoughts on, I mean, we, if, we, if you want, we can keep going here. Motivation, goals. Um, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna struggle to carry on past the top of the hour, but um, something I can, I can put some time aside this week to look at and make some suggestions. I'm gonna highlight the sections that are have. Maybe I'll needs uh, new content need place on content is it's basically like Laura Mipsum. I don't know how to say it. But I'm going to say that. Uh, replace the Laura Ipsum filler content. This is content from a different uh, goal so i'm going to do this for each one of these yeah okay so we know which ones to work on yeah like this the proposal 
This one should be more straightforward um, other than the same issues that we're having where people can say, wait a second, can I do this? Isn't that a part of the concern? And I think we'll just have to keep expanding on it and add this sort of thing would be okay. We may need to actually write something about intention. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, intention is important. Should be trying to. I put a comment up there by Ian's, my paraphrasing of Ian's words. Um, workload context, can you scroll down there? <clears throat> All right. This one should be something that we could knock out right now. Yeah, so that's... I mean, that's what, what I would just say all pod types. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any reason why it should be uh, system pod types should do this? Victor, you had comments on the last best practice where we actually thought we needed to exclude system ones, uh, whatever, wherever that came from. But what about this one? No, I guess like, uh, I mean, there is no reason to, you know, follow him. I mean, at least in. In the system pods, I, I think they also have to follow the same in practice. All right, that's what I'm thinking. They should follow it. So the, the, the other thing that I was the, the other thing that I was thinking is like, a, is there is there is a way to um to validate that? Like, a, I mean, like like using eBPF to to track which uh, are the uh, Processes running by the OS, like, or do you know if there is a tool to? I, I don't know if there should be an, another way to describe this as a, for example, like the number of uh, syscalls to execute new uh, new processes. I, I'm mostly, I'm concerned about like people confusing terms like a uh, threads and processes. Which yeah. Are not the same. I. Uh, okay. Um, da, 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 da. Notes, caveats. Um, yeah, maybe, probably some there. Yeah, something here to do. Um, add information about threads. So, is this like, uh, Threads and processes and uh, add information about child threads mm -hmm. or processes. Y'all can't see what I'm doing. Being okay. I I just put it down there under notes caveat. Sorry. Oh yeah. So the so the um that we we may need to expand on that. I did try to put something up under the summary section. Um, where uh, under the summary, if you scroll up there, Tom, I'm trying to write something about that. So the the Docker content, it actually talks about it. It's okay to have multiple processes, but avoid, it's it's talking about the responsibilities and then um, forking multiple worker processes. So that's child processes and threat. Well, the, the way that it's, I think they actually become non-child the way, I think you can enable that in Apache. Um, so they actually are no longer a child process, uh, but running by themselves, and then they can have child process. I would still consider them part of that same concern. That's an implementation of 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 those. The worker process is probably a good idea, but the 
threads, whether it's a thread, whether it's a child process or separate process, but all from that same concerning concern for the application. I think all of that's legitimate. And we can cover that both in whether it's in the summary or the notes. Um, there is going to be some, there's going to be some point where we have to need some expectation that they understand what we're talking about. If it gets down and they're like, I don't know what you mean by a, a thread or a child process, there, it becomes an education and programming beyond probably the scope. We go, go look up this and we can give them links and stuff. We can put some definitions and then references. And then we have to have, there needs to be some assumption that the reader is gonna understand those things or they need to go uh, look them up. In my opinion, what do you, does that cover it, Victor? No, yeah, yeah, that covers that. Um, because it's a perfect way to, I mean, it's a perfect place to put all these extra information. All right. Um, this makes me think that we're going to need to come back through all of our content and <clears throat> try to look for shared definitions and terms and pull things out uh, or copy things or whatever into our own shared area, but also consider which items would be good to uh donate upstream to the cncf glossary yeah and of course there may be new stuff that we should go look and reference that'd be the other side all right well um workload context I'm going to delete all the user stories for supply chain attack, and then we can add those back in. Okay. All right, well, I'll, I'll look to provide some comments, content, suggestions, whatever, this week. Um, but I, I need to go now for another meeting. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, thanks, thanks all. Cheers. See you next week. Bye.